What's up, guys? Pitman here, bringing you the best of last solo once again. <laughs> uh, promise next week we'll get back to normal, um, but we've both been busy with different things going on. You know how life is. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into another exciting week of action, and we've got a lot of changes here in the rankings as a result. Uh, number 22, the Garage Wildcats. Uh, another tough loss, 50-14 uh, to 14 to Harding. Um, all you can say to Garinger is keep fighting and, um, you know, listen to your coaches and keep trying to get better each week. Find something that you didn't do well last week and try to improve on that uh, in the next game. Uh, number 21, Olympic, uh, kind of slipped down a little bit. Um, they were on a bye uh, this week, uh, and they face Independence next week in a game that um, both teams are going to feel like they have a chance to win. Uh, but for Olympic, they got to kind of work some things out over there. Um, I'm hoping that Coach Wilkes will, will kind of get things going back on the right track. Um, number 20, Barry. Um, they did move up a spot despite uh, their loss. Um, I think they played Rocky River pretty tough. Uh, they were in that game uh, late, and, um, you know, they put up 25 points. And, you know, the, the one thing that Barry has shown so far is an ability to score. Um you know, when you're a young team, you're rebuilding. You know, usually the defense is ahead of the offense. But, you know, they have a good sophomore quarterback in David Hernandez. Um, saw him in the practice we went to a little while ago. And, um, you know, they're, they're getting it done with the skill guys. So, you know, give give Coach Witherspoon some time. And um, Barry will be on the right track for sure. Uh, number 19, Independence. Another tough loss, 33 to nothing this time in Scotland County. They haven't scored yet this season. Um, have, been, have been having trouble moving the ball and stopping people. Grand, they played two uh, very good teams. And uh, we'll see uh, what they're made of uh, coming up uh, real soon um, as the schedule kind of eases up a little bit for them. Uh, number 18 is West Charlotte. Uh, tough loss, 45-6 um, to six to West Met. Uh, I thought that game would be a, a little closer, um, honestly. Um, you know, the schedule doesn't get either easier for West Charlotte, and they're already playing in the, the toughest conference in the state in the Mecca. So, um, you know, they have a lot of talent, and sometimes, you know, you got to take a little more time to get that talent all on the same page. And um, I'm sure Coach Hart will, and this team will get better as uh, time goes on. Uh, number 17 is Providence. Uh, tough loss to Vance. Uh, Vance put up 63 points in that game. Uh, Providence did score 21. Um, their best player still has not played, though, Drake DeLulius, so that kind of affects their ranking and their performance, obviously. Um, you know, Coach Bowles, um, we kind of mentioned it on the forum about, you know, the JV uh, kind of being down before he got there. So, you know, he's trying to kind of rebuild on the run, and you got to give a coach time to get, you know, his things in place. And um, Coach Bowles is a good one, and he'll, you know, he'll get it done. Number 16 is Hopewell. You might be asking, why is Hopewell 16th after they lost 63 to nothing? They have a win. And um, a lot of teams that are 0-2 would like to be 1-1. One one. <laughs> so, um, you know, despite Hopewell's performance against Lake Norman, I put them at number 16 because they are 1-1. One one. Um, you know, they've had the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. So where is the truth? It's usually in between, right? So we got to find out you know, where Hopewell is um, overall. And I think that'll bear out here in the next couple of weeks with their schedule. Uh, number 15 is Harding. Harding bounces back with a big win over Garinger, 50-14. Uh, to 14. Um, You know, those guys are, are better than um, they have been the past couple of years. Um, Coach Griner has put in a lot of work. Those guys have worked hard in the weight room, and I think it showed in that Garinger game. And um, they got a big, big game with East Mech this week that's really going to tell a lot of us where they are right now as a program. Uh, number 14 is Porter Ridge. They're 1-0. They went out and beat Piedmont 21-7. And, um, you know, a lot of people coming into this year did not expect that. Um, Coach Hurts has really got the program energized. Fans are excited. It's going in the right direction. They brought back that split back uh, shotgun uh, offense that they ran um, when he was there previously as a defensive coordinator. Obviously, the defense is doing a good job, so we'll see. Down in Union County, their schedule will get tougher, and uh, we'll see what they're made of. Number 13 is North Mech. Um, they won last week over Cox Mill 27-0. And um, Emmanuel Wilson 
I did a really good job in that game. Uh, over 300 yards rushing. And um, he did a great job for sure. All right, now we're in the top 12 of the best of last. Number 12, Rocky River. No change in their ranking. They won 40-25 to 25 over Barry. Um, Elijah Henry got going on the ground. And, um, you know, they, they were. it was a closer game than probably some people expected. But um, they got the W, and that's what mattered. Um, big game for them next week. Or this week, excuse me. They go play Sun Valley, who's a, a heck of an offense to stop. So that might really be a shootout. <laughs> I believe that game's in Union County. That'll be a fun one to watch. Uh, number 11 is West Mech. Uh, no change in their ranking, but um, they won the big West Side game 45 6 over West Charlotte. Uh, people that were there tell me that West Mech was really organized, well coached, um, and pretty much just dominated the game. Uh, Richard Latimer had another good game at quarterback, four rushing touchdowns. That's uh, really impressive from that position. And on um, that defense, um, they didn't give up any points. West Charlotte scored on a pick six. So um, that defense pitched a shutout, and um, you know Coach Davis has got it going. A uh, good way for them to bounce back after that tough loss. Uh, number ten is East Mac. They dropped two spots this week. Um, they were in the game against South Mac for a long time. South kind of uh, pulled away late uh, to win that game, 28-10. Um, you know it's a good sign for that East Mac defense to hold up as well as they did against a good team like South and. Um, you know, a couple things could have broke either way in that game. Uh, could have been a different score. Um, these guys are still, obviously, a, like I got them, a, a top 10 team in the city. Uh, they're going to continue to be a force to be reckoned with um, this season. Number nine is Andre Kill. They fall three spots um, this week. And lost 30 to 20 to Myers Park. Um, still top 10 in the city. Um, Good game at Myers Park. Uh, Could have went either way. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a, a tough loss, but it's not a conference loss. It's still early. Uh, still a very talented team down there in Ballantyne, and uh, Coach Evans has, has got it going in the right direction for sure. Uh, number eight, the team that people are starting to buzz about a little bit, got in the Sweet 16, and that's Myers Park. Uh, Myers Park won that game 30-20 over Audrey Kell, and, you know, people are starting to take notice. They're 2-0. And, um... You know, we talk about Coach Scott Chadwick a lot um, in the past. He's won everywhere he's been. This is his third season. He's got his guys. And, um, you know, they're starting to feel like that they can, um, you know, compete with almost anyone. And when a team gets confidence and they have talent, which Myers Park does, um, they can become dangerous. So this is going to be a team to watch. And um, now they're starting to get a little spotlight. We're going to have to see how they handle that, you know, going forward. Number seven is uh, Charlotte Catholic. No change in their ranking. They beat Providence Day 21 to nothing. Um, defense pitched a shutout. It was always good to see. Um, offense, uh, they led that game 21 to nothing at halftime. And then, you know, per reports, they started substituting liberally, you know, in the second half, looking at different people, different players, and different spots and everything. And, you know, with that offense, 21 can feel like 42 <laughs> the way they possess the ball. So. You know, it's not a bad idea this early in the season to get, you know, a lot of guys some looks and, and see what you got. So, um, you know, still we think this, this team's going to continue to improve. Um, they're well coached. Uh, coach Bridowitz, two-time coach of the year. And um, we're going to continue to see them probably rise up the rankings more or so than fall down, I believe. Number six, moving up three spots is A.L. Brown. Uh, they defeated South Rowan 65-7, to you might say. You know, beating South Rowan, what's the big deal in that? Um, they did what they were supposed to do. They went out and they absolutely dominated an inferior team. And that is something you don't see um, all the time, you know. So I give them a lot of credit for that. Also, they're 2-0. And, and um, you know, Coach Newsom has, has obviously got it going. And, um, you know, this is going to be a team to watch also. You know, like I said, us here in Charlotte, we don't recognize A.O. Brown consistently, but... You know, with Coach Newsom's pedigree at Butler, you obviously can't discount them. And um, in that Mecca, I tell you, it's look, shaping up to be another hell of a race that you, this year in the conference. Uh, speaking of the Mecca, number five, Vance, no change in their ranking. 63-21 um, winners over Providence. Um, Vance offense looking dynamite once again. Um, 
You know, Kingsley Effetti had a big game. Michael Roberts on the outside had a big game. And another receiver named Jalen Kane is coming into his own, too. So that's just another offensive threat for Vance. And I tell you, man, that's that's tough. You got all that, you know, Fetty pulling the trigger. It's tough to stop. Um, we're going to see, you know, and I think it's going to come up real soon. They got George Washington uh, coming up this week out of Virginia. That's a talented team. Uh, we got to do some research on them and see, you know, what kind of test it's going to be. But, um, you know, they defeated him up there last year. So, um, Vance, man, you know, people kind of forgot about him after the, the late season struggles. But, you know, I, I think you got to watch him now. They, they, you got to you gotta keep your eye on these guys. Uh, number four is South Mech. Uh, no change in their ranking, but an impressive win over East Mech 28-10. to 10. Uh, The thing with South is um, both sides of the ball are efficient. You know, they don't wow you in any one area of the game, but they just play real solid, good football. And, you know, that wins you a lot of games. And this team won, you know, nine games last year. You know, disappointing loss in the playoffs. You know, kind of tough situation playing team back-to-back. But, um, you know, I, 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 I've said this, you know, for a while. You know, I'm pre- predicting these guys to win the, the South Mech 8. And um, if they stay healthy... You know, I, I hadn't seen anything that changes my prediction as of yet. Um, it's not going to be easy. I think it'll be real tight, real fun to watch in that conference, the top half. But, um, you know, I think South Mech is the real deal. And we'll see this week um, in their game. Um, and we'll break that down here in a little bit. Uh, dropping one spot to number three is Butler, uh, losing 35-20 to Mallard Creek. Um, they had some some bright spots, and it's been a lot of debate on the forums on CarolinaVarsity.com about penalties and you know this and that and uh, physicality, um, you know all these kind of things. And in the end, Butler is a very talented and very good team, and you know most likely, <laughs> like it has been in the past, these teams will see each other again. Hopefully, it's not the second round of playoffs like last year, but. Um, they're a good team, a really good team. And, um, you know, they had a, a test, you know, from going from Olympic to Mallard Creek is night and day. And, um, sometimes that can be a shock to the system. Um, they have some guys that are hurt right now. Um, so, you know, they, they have things they can take from that game and build on. And, you know, they will bounce back and, you know, their next opponent, you know, it, it's going to be, it, they're going to be fired up and ready to go. I'll tell you that much. Uh, number two, moving up a spot, is a uh, Huff. They won 31-7 to over Mooresville in a game that we did not really talk about on the forums. However, Huff um, led that game. It was a tight game at halftime. Huff was leading, though. And they kind of gradually pulled away, kind of wore Mooresville down, and um, they got the win. Another good defensive performance by that Huff defense. And the uh, offense, you know, was able to get up to 31 points, which if you can score 31 points a game, you're going to win a lot of ball games, especially with a well-coached uh, defense like they have up there. Number one, uh, they won the big showdown last week, and there's no doubt they're the best team in the city, probably the best team in the state. Um, yeah, they are the best team in the state. Who can I can't lie. <laughs> And they're probably better than number 10 in the nation, and that's Mallard Creek uh, when they won over Butler 35-20 uh, to 20 last week. Uh, very impressive um, offensive game planning. The coaching was uh, superior. Um, the players, the physicality they showed, um, even though it borders on the edge sometimes, you got that kind of talent, you just got to let them go. You know, you don't want to reel that in, just let them be themselves and be natural. And uh, that's what this team did last week. Um, they, they rebounded from the criticism they faced in a 7-3 victory. And the offense showed they can really um, step on the gas and get it done when they need to, both running and throwing the football. And um, they got a big game this week with Burns. It's going to get probably some national attention, as it should, uh, two story programs at this point. And, um, you know, they got revenge on their mind. Burns beat them last year down there. And um, I can guarantee you this team will not lay down and um, they will be ready to go once again up at their home opener up at Mallard Creek this week. 
So that's the best to last. I uh, appreciate you watching. Um, if you got comments, post them below um, in the forums or on the news article when this is posted. Uh, thank you very much, and I uh, appreciate the time. Thanks.